Okay, so today we will be making liquid soap. I will be showing you the steps to take. First of all, we will dissolve our soda ash in water. So that's the soda ash I've added in my container. Now I'll add water. So how you will know that it is soda ash is that once you add water you, and you start stirring it, you will feel heat on the container. So once you start stirring, you realize that the container gets hot. You see, I'm keeping my hand there to check the temperature. So then you see that heat or the temperature of the container becoming hot, just know that the chemical you added and started put stirring with water is called soda ash. So you stir it properly before you check the next chemical. So we're going to mix the next chemical, that is, we'll put STPP, we'll dissolve it in water. The water you use in dissolving this chemical doesn't have a, a specific measurement. So you can just use any quantity of water you want, but let the water be a bit more than the chemical. So I've said I've added plenty of water inside, and I will start stirring it so that it will dissolve properly. You want to dissolve all the chemicals. In making liquid soap, all the chemicals should be dissolved. So once it's properly dissolved, you stir it when it's properly dissolved, you take it out and dissolve the next chemical. So the next chemical we'll be dissolving here is our SLS. SLS is a foam booster. It's a foaming agent. It really, this is what actually causes your liquid soap to foam very well. It's one of the foaming agents. We have several foaming agents here. So SLS is one of the foaming agents. So you realize that when I start stirring it, you will notice bubble. You will start foaming or forming leather. It shows that it is a foaming agent. Liquid soap uses a combo of foaming agents and cleansing agents. The cleansing agent I'm using in this liquid soap production is soda ash and STPP. Then the rest of the chemicals are foaming agents. This is actually a hand wash liquid soap. It's used in washing the hand, for washing plates. You can use it to wash cars and wash. You can even use it and wash clothes. It's actually it's, it's not. It's, it's, this is not. You can use this to to take your bath. It's used for washing hands, clothes, cars, and other stuff like that. But you can use it for as a bathing soap. Now we will dissolve our texapon. Now. Other people, whenever they make their liquid soap, they usually tend to mix texapon with sulfonic acid. The funny thing here is that texapon and sulfonic acid do the same thing. There's no difference in the both of them. So you can choose to use one of them. But if you, want, if you love to, you can use the both of them. But me, I usually use just one. Others mix the two together and, and dissolve in water, but me, I just work with one of them. You can use sulfonic acid or you can use texapon. It's not a must to use the two. They do the same thing. You dissolve it in water and you keep stirring. It also behaves like soda ash. It has a way of re releasing heat. So if you touch the container, you realize that the container is hot. It behaves like soda ash. So we can say that it's an exothermic reaction. So both soda ash and texapon go through an exothermic 
reaction where heat is being released in the presence of water. Now it's time for us to dissolve our nitrosol. There's one thing you need to understand about nitrosol in making liquid soap is that nitrosol must be the last chemical you dissolve. Dissolve this chemical last because if you dissolve this chemical and keep it aside to start dissolving other chemicals, you realize that your nitrosol has become hard. It will become hard. So it's not always good to dissolve it and keep. So that's why it's best to dissolve your nitrosol last. It should be the last chemical you are dissolving. Because if you dissolve it and keep it the way I'm dissolving others to keep, by the time you turn to use it, it has become hard. So you dissolve it last in water. And the water you are using to dissolve it will carry majority of the water you use in the liquid. So we can see I use plenty of water in dissolving it. Unlike the other ones, I was using little water. But I use plenty of water in dissolving it. Then you make sure you stir it properly till everything has melted or has been dissolved. Then, please, this is where caution must be taken. Do not dissolve your nitrosol first. Always dissolve it last because the moment you stop stirring your nitrosol and keep it aside, it becomes hard. But if you continue stirring it, it will not become hard. So that's why it's good to dissolve it last. So you see, I, I keep stirring this nitrosol. There is no hard thing under. Now, why you, why you keep stirring? You now add your soda ash, your dissolved soda ash. Don't stop stirring. By the time you want to add your soda ash, you can pause for a minute, add your soda ash, and continue stirring. You must follow this pattern. Soda ash comes first before your chemicals. If you are using caustic soda, your caustic soda will come before your soda ash. But I'm not working with caustic soda in this my liquid soap. I, want, I use only soda ash. I prefer to work with soda ash than caustic soda. So I put my soda ash first. Now the next chemical will, will be coming in, which is my STPP. I pour it in next. I stir it properly again. Then and I'll pour the whole thing inside. Then I will keep stirring. You see how I you deal with my nitrosol. While I was stirring it, I poured my, ST, uh, my soda ash inside first, then kept on stirring, then poured my STPP inside. That's why I've seen why I dissolve my nitrosol last. It's not good to dissolve it, stir it, and keep it aside. It must come last. So now, after I've stirred it properly, I will now add the next chemical. I'll make sure that I've given it a proper stirring. Make sure that everything mixes together. So I'll add my texapon. Now, this is where the problem is. Once you add texapon into your liquid soup, it will release a lot of foam. So it's better to keep two containers. So I will divide this. I will divide it because the foam is too much. I, I, I don't want it to pour. If it pours, it, it, it will be a waste. So I will divide it. So that it won't pour. Once you add your text up on, it produces a lot of foam. So you have to be careful. Yes, I, you don't end up pouring most of your chemicals. The foam will just rise automatically. So I my own rise. It just rose automatically to the top of the bucket. So I have to divide the side to not pour. So now I have two liquid soaps, one in the first container and the second one in the other container. I'll put the remaining text up on that. I didn't put, uh, I'll add everything inside now. And I'll keep stirring. Now and I have two liquid soap, one in the first bucket and the other in the other white bucket. I will divide it again because it is it is instead of rising up to the topping. I don't want it to pour. So I will stir the both of them. Now I will add my liquid foam booster. I will add it, add it to the first, con first bucket. Then I will add it to the other bucket that has my other liquid soup. Then I will continue stirring them with this stick. <coughs> what I added is called liquid foam booster. You know SLS is powder in foam. So 
SLS is called, is called a powder foam booster. Then this one is called a liquid foam booster. I pour the liquid foam booster inside it. Now, liquid foam booster helps in increasing the foaming ability of your soap. So I'll add my fragrance next. Add it to the both containers. So, like I said before, liquid soap uses a combo of foaming agent and cleansing agent, but uses more of foaming agent and it uses little of cleaning agent. So I will stir the fragrance, try to mix well with the liquid soap. Now my soap will start having a wonderful scent. My fragrance, I, I use, um, I made use of, use of two fragrances, which were fragrances, which were um, lavender and ampico. Lavender and ampico. So I'll add my SLS. I forgot to add it, so I'll add it now. Now I'll add my color. I'm, I'm making a green liquid soap. I mean, yes, the usual color. The normal color so i'm making the conventional color that we all see outside so that's that's the color you can choose any color you love to put but me I'm, i i want to use green you can use orange color you can use lemon color you can use um uh, yellow any color that you you can use pink any color that you feel like using you just put it but me i want to use green color so i see add my color and stir it properly So I'll add more color because I don't, I, I'm not satisfied with the color. It's not deep enough. So I'll add more color to it. And I'll use water and dissolve it. And pour it into my liquid soap. I've mixed the whole thing, I will keep it for 24 hours. So it, it will, after 24 hours, you will realize that the liquid soap, all the foam has disappeared, and what you are left with is a clear soap. So I'm going to test it and you see how it foams. You see how it is. It foams everywhere. So thank you for watching and see you next time on our next video. Goodbye.